Needles that freeze prostate cancer cells and are guided by magnetic resonance imaging have an effect similar to frostbite on the region applied to. It's a new method that may give hope to those affected by the disease and only recently the MRI-guided cryotherapy was carried out on two patients at the University Hospital in Southampton. It was the first time in the UK that we'd used MRI guidance to deliver prostate cryotherapy, which is a new way of approaching this well-established technique of destroying prostate cancer. And the main advantage that we think we can deliver with this is really precise image guidance so that when we're delivering the cryotherapy, the area of prostate cancer that we're treating is completely encompassed by the ice ball. It's non-invasive because patients, although they have a brief anaesthetic, uh, you know, it's a light anaesthetic, not uh, particularly heavy, they are asleep inside the scanner and we position needles through the skin into the prostate. And once they're seen to be positioned correctly, we can then activate the cryotherapy device, which creates, uh, through passing gases through these needles, we create ice and we can actually watch it developing on the scan. With MRI guidance, not only can we potentially see the lesion we're trying to treat, um, but we also have the advantage of being able to see all of the ice ball and all of the surrounding structures, which we don't have the option currently in, in theatre with our trust guided procedure to do. So not only can we target the lesion and make sure we're getting an appropriate treatment, we can try and reduce the chances of um, collateral damage to surrounding structures, so to the bladder or the urinary sphincter or, or the rectum, um, which is a, a real advantage in safety and hopefully in treatment efficacy for MRI. Prior to this new technique, clinicians relied on ultrasound guidance, which is only looking at one edge of the ice ball. MRI-guided cryotherapy offers an alternative for patients who have undergone unsuccessful radiotherapy and are unsuitable to be treated with high-frequency sound waves. We think cryotherapy is particularly helpful for people with anatomical difficulties or previous treatment like radiotherapy. One of our patients had previously had the bowel removed, which makes access to the prostate very difficult with, with ultrasound. And um, we think that patients who have cancers sitting in the front of the prostate where, where we might be able to spare the other parts of the prostate, particularly the nerves, these cases are particularly good for cryotherapy. It's clearly very complex. There's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen before you can even undertake the procedure. So it's not going to become commonplace overnight. I think it clearly has some advantages for some patients. What we need to do first is to do some more of these cases and work out exactly who the patients are that it will be advantageous for and which particular cancers we're going to be best treating in this manner. So far, both of the patients who underwent the procedure are doing well and they will receive repeated checkups in the future. One of them told that Soland that he was pleased with this new treatment and that he's hopeful it will also help other patients. We have to repeat these MRI scans to see what happens as, as, as things go on and what we expect to see is shrinkage of the prostate tissue turning into a scar and then hopefully nothing coming back. And we monitor this over the course of several years, repeating the MRI scan every year keeping an eye on the PSA test and we think that uh, through doing that we should really uh, be able to find out that these patients have got good control. That for the future we really need to raise some funding to support the uh, development of this so we need to do uh, you know, probably 10 or 20 more procedures to really understand uh, you know, how we can improve it, how we can streamline it and make it more efficient. Nicole Ries, that's TV.